So I'm here to talk a little bit about the challenges uh, that I see in working with accessibility from the content perspective. Uh, we usually talk about the programmer perspective and the technical part, but not so much about the content part. Um, my name is Frida. Uh, I'm a content manager uh, at Curious Mind, a part of ARC. Uh, so I sometimes sit in this building when I'm not at my clients. Um, I actually came across uh, web accessibility uh, and realized how in important and interesting it was when uh, I was studying to become a web communicator. Um, that's about four years ago now. Uh, and I wrote my bachelor thesis on it, actually. Um, uh, now I work as a product manager at uh, one of our biggest uh, governmental agencies, uh, trying to help them with uh, accessible documents. If I talk too quickly, can someone please like raise a hand or something? Because um, I, I think I tend to do that, OK? <laughs> So a short background then. Uh, actually, in 2002, 98% uh, of the websites actually failed from a web content accessibility guidelines perspective. Uh, I'm going to assume, as the previ uh, previous uh, speaker said, that you know what WCAG is, or WCAG. If you don't, please just grab me after this, and uh, I can talk a little bit about it. I don't have time to, to do it now, though. Uh, and it's also said that uh, the one top million visitor sites on Google actually fails uh, in at least one of the criteria defined in the web content accessibility guidelines. Um, from my part, uh, point of view, uh, the web content accessibility guidelines focus too little on the content still and too much on the uh, developer's part, uh, the technical, technical parts uh, and the programming parts. That was tough to say. Um, and too little comment, yeah. Uh, I think also in Sweden we talk a lot about like the law, Doslagen, um, and why we need to follow the law, but we actually don't talk that much about why there's a law and why we need accessibility, which is of course like equality and the people. That's why this is important. Um, uh, I also find that still, uh, although we had some years to actually fix this, um, there's a lot of uh, there's still a lot uh, of lacking experience and education. Um, there's also, from the content perspective, um, a problem with like different roles and how they clash because. Uh, the content manager is usually the one handling all of the angry <laughs> emails or, or talking to people, the people who actually uh, take part of your content. Uh, but the programmers usually don't. Sorry, programmers, but it's true. Um, and we need to be better at working together uh, from different uh, roles and with different perspectives. Uh, I'm going to just quickly show you five concrete areas in which us as content managers can actually nail it and be really good, but we're not there quite yet. So I'm going to start with alternative texting. Uh, I'm going to take an example of how it can look when uh, it's done with an automatic texting. Um, this example is in Swedish. Uh, there's a point in that, and that is like the automatic texting in English is a lot better than it is in Swedish, um, as for this point at least. Um, and now I just want you to picture what I'm reading out loud. Uh, and if someone has the guts, please tell me if what you pictured. Okay? <laughs> uh, so I do speak with a Swedish southern accent, so if someone finds it a bit weird, then it's okay. I'm used to it. Okay. Så barnförsörjaren använder kammar och hårklippande kärer för att trimma ändarna av mans hår. Okej, someone? What is this? No, no one? Sounds like a criminal offense. It does, right? Yeah, exactly. So what is it? It's actually, the picture showing now is actually a person being at the hairdresser. Uh, and that's it. 
Uh, so that says a lot about automatic texting and why we need to do better than using, using <laughs> automatic texting at this point. Uh, and uh, studies made last year from uh, WebAIM says that 31% of all the websites' banners are still missing alternative texting. There, there are no studies uh, of how many websites has uh, such bad alternative texting as this example. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness for that, right? Um, now I'm going to talk a little bit about plain language. Uh, and plain language, also called uh, plain writing or plain English, or in Swedish it's klarspråk. Uh, it's all about communication that your audience can understand the first time they hear or read it. And the plain language helps readers quickly and easily understand your message. So I'm going to give you two examples. Uh, I'm going to start with the poor one because that's always fun, right? Okay, so I'm going to read it out loud. Uh, we would like to ensure that we're prepared to implement the necessary steps required to control an outbreak of an infectious disease that represents a risk to patients, employees, and others associated with our clinics. Ha, huh, I got tired even saying that. It's so long, such a long sentence, so many complicated words, and there's too much information. So let's try it another way, right? A better solution would be just to say, we want to make sure that we are ready to control an outbreak of an infectious disease in our clinics. Simple as that, right? Let's talk a little bit about contrasts. Uh, I'm now showing a picture with uh, poor contra contrast examples, uh, really poor contrast examples. And actually, this is, according to studies, the top one accessibility issue that you find on uh, published websites as of last year. 86% of all published websites has this issue at some part. That says a lot, right? Um, and I think I talked a little bit about like different roles and how they sometimes clash. Uh, sometimes it's really important for a designer to follow through with a, a cool idea, like oh this is this is cool, this is impressive, right? But they don't they don't really want to check the contrasts because that would that would uh, disturb the visual uh, image. So. I want us all to ask ourselves the question, what is most important, that your content is or looks cool or that everyone can access it, right? Um, yes. And this is an area where we as content manager often actually ends up having to take a stand or actually can end up in conflict <laughs> with others. Um, yes. So let's talk a little bit about accessible documents. Um, actually, Hampus, which is one of the um, the, the ones who who's gathering people for teeth, te well, tea. Uh, I talked to him because I'm now uh, working with one of the biggest government agencies, and he said like there's a document hysteria in the government agencies of Sweden, and I can only agree. And although the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines actually say, please publish as much as you can as HTML, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to do it the way we always done. OK, then we need to learn how to do it right. Uh, I'm going to play you an example, and I really hope the sound works. We had a little bit of trouble with this when we tried. So instead of like the big... Um, it sound you you'll hear it from this little box behind me here. Okay, hold your thumbs. Challenges in working with accessibility from a content perspective. Tom, Tom, blank steg, blank steg, blank steg. Tom, which problems do we encounter? What skills are needed and are there any simple solutions? Okay, so imagine uh, listening to a document with a screen reader and this is what you hear. You couldn't really understand that, right? Because I didn't change the language in this document. I wrote the text in English, but the settings were in Swedish, so the screen reader picks up, okay, I'm going to read this in Swedish. That's what it does. That's one thing. Then there's a lot of space, uh, spaces and other things that, like, it's so, so common. And we really need to step up the game here. 
Um, there's n not really any good statistics, what I know, um, about how many people use screen readers in Sweden. Uh, but I saw some study at, Fun at Funka, uh, which said that at least 30,000 either don't see anything or, uh, or hardly see anything. And at least 13% of the population has difficulties in reading. And this is our, our Swedish government agency, so this is really, really important. Another thing with document is many of the examples that I'm talking about today is actually included in, in the documents. Uh, all texting, um, uh, plain language, contrasts, etc. So last example. <laughs> Subtitles. Um, yes. So uh, there's so many uh, automatic alternative subtitles today, especially on big platforms like YouTube. Um, they're usually not that good. Um, we don't. We need to. Our content managers need to actually learn to to do good subtitles because uh, I will show you an example of why it doesn't really work when we use um, the AI. As for now, it's getting better, but yeah. So now I'm showing a picture, it's a tweet actually, um, and the picture is showing a big, um, I think like a football field or a big green grass uh, area uh, with people, a lot of people standing in a line. Uh, the automatic texting is saying, uh, we might be bad at some things, but we are so good at killing. <laughs> uh, and the person posting this is saying, queuing, I said queuing. Uh, so this is why <laughs> we can't really trust uh, automatic texting tools. Uh, and I think this is a pretty good example of that. Um, so some Keep conclusions. Um, <laughs> content is just as important, at least from my point of view, uh, as programming and coding. Because as I said, content managers are usually the, the they lay the last hand on the website and the content that reaches um, reaches a people. Um, we, we have to keep ourselves updated uh, and educated. We need to work together with different roles. Um, and we can't, we can't ever forget why we do this. And that's the human beings, not the law. That was pretty much what I was about to say. And in Swedish, we say, tack a bok. So <laughs> thank you.